Here we go. Rorchestra. Rorchestra. W-R-O-R-C-H-E-S-T-R-A-1. Rorchestra 1. It's a great username. Uh, One of the most important things for me in a film is the music. Yes. You often say that you have 30 movies in your top five list. Do you have any soundtrack top five lists? Oh, yeah, I totally do. Um, Yeah. Okay, so to go really, really, really old school, the soundtrack for Blade Runner by the very recently late Vangelis is an absolute pinnacle of the form. I love that soundtrack so, 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 so much. Uh, And listened to it endlessly in my late teens and early 20s and early 30s (laughs) and late 20s. Um, The soundtrack to Legend, and now Legend the movie with Tim Curry and Tom Cruise and Mia Sara has two soundtracks. There is a European soundtrack by Jerry Goldsmith, if I remember correctly, and an American soundtrack by Tangerine Dream. The Jerry Goldsmith soundtrack is terrific, uh, and it works with the movie. I've seen both versions, but the Tangerine Dream soundtrack is very much a freaking 1980s synth paradise of a soundtrack. And it includes Is Your Love Strong Enough by the incredible Brian Ferry, which I was listening to here in the cave just a few days ago. Um, When it comes to modern soundtracks, I think among some of the best soundtracks recently made, Two of them I'm going to call out are by my friend Michael Giacchino. Um, The soundtrack to The Incredibles, which John Landis describes as the best James Bond soundtrack ever written. And he's not not wrong. The soundtrack to The Incredibles is just, it is one of the most fun soundtracks to drive to. The other Giacchino score that I recently, that, that came out recently that I loved is War for Planet of the Apes. That is, that is one of those movies where the soundtrack really is like another character in the movie, uh, pushing the narrative, pulling the narrative, bringing really so much more emotional elaboration to what's going on. That movie, how great is that movie? War for Planet of the Apes, man. Let's give it some love. It's incredible. Now, all that being said, there is a soundtrack that I have been obsessed with lately, and it's by Carter Burwell. Carter Burwell has done most of the Coen Brothers movies, if not all of them. I haven't quite looked, but I, his, uh, I, I was getting a little dry. His soundtrack to their second film, Miller's Crossing, is one of my all-time favorite soundtracks. It's got a beautiful sort of Irish kind of theme to it, and it's evocative and sad and, it, it, it's period. I listen to that one. That is on all of my sort of quiet playlists, the main titles music for Miller's Crossing. Um, Guillermo del Toro told me he thought that Carter Burwell and Howard Shore were two of the great, great soundtrack writers going. Uh, Howard Shore did all the music for the Lord of the Rings movies, among many other incredible things. But Carter Burwell, so... I love all of Carter Burwell's soundtracks for Coen Brothers movies, and there's now a, 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 an album that, that combines a lot of them, but it is the soundtrack for True Grit. And I've talked about it on the channel recently even, but the fact is True Grit is, is, is it's, it's one of the, my two favorite Coen Brothers films. Wow, yeah. Um, it's one of my two favorite Coen Brothers films, True Grit, which I've watched, I'm not kidding, five times in the last three months because I can't get enough of it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a remake of the John Wayne Western. Uh, it stars Jeff Bridges in the John Wayne role. Um, Haley Stansfield? Steinfeld. Steinfeld. Steinfeld, um, who recently was on the, uh, uh, the Hawkeye. Hawkeye show. I keep wanting to say Arrow. The Hawkeye show. She plays Hawkeye's protege in the Hawkeye show, and she's amazing at it. Uh, she plays the young girl in True Grit. And I was talking to a friend recently, and he asserted that her performance in there is one of those singular performances. And I asked him what he meant, and he's like, you know, the kind of performance that like nobody else could do for that role. And I think he's totally right. Haley Steinfeld's performance in True Grid is incredible. And she's there opposite Jeff Bridges and Matt Damon. Barry Pepper shows up later to play Lucky Ned. Oh my God. True Grid is such a, 
One of my issues with the Coen brothers is sometimes I feel like their films, I feel like their films aren't as loving as I want them to be. It's a certain thing I want out of a movie. It doesn't mean that they should have put that in. It just is what my taste is. And sometimes there's a, in the precision that they bring to, the, it, in the incredible world-class precision they bring to their filmmaking, sometimes in some movies I feel a little cold. But I feel that also in directors like Alan Parker and Michael Mann sometimes too. In, in their precision, I, I, I feel some lack of emotion. Okay, just very, very in tiny increments, but true grit, man. That movie loves you all the way through. It is so kind and weird and beautiful and it has its own sense of time and propriety and morality. Uh, and the soundtrack, the title, the, the opening song on the soundtrack is called The Wicked Flea. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting, like, I feel a little emotional ping just saying that out loud because I listen, I literally have been listening to that soundtrack like every other day for the past couple of months. Um, so thank you for asking me that incredible question, orchestra run one, uh, because yeah, movie soundtracks are, are really important to me. Um, I will tell you one more movie soundtrack story, which was when I was working for Jamie Heineman at M5 when he had first started M5 as a going business. It's around 1995. Um, there was a lot of back and forth between people about what we were putting on the stereo and people were bringing in cassettes and then we were listening to NPR and like people got, you know, it can be a thing in a shop as to what music you're gonna listen to. And Jamie went out one day and bought a 200 CD changer and he went to Tower Records, I think, when it still existed, and bought like 70 movie soundtracks. Actually, one of them was the Raising Arizona soundtrack, which was also by Carter Burwell, which is a freaking hilarious soundtrack, like Raising Arizona is a freaking hilarious movie. But Jamie would put these, two, these 70 soundtrack CDs on random in the 200 CD changer, and it was all we would listen to all day long. And it was great. It was weird, and it was great. All right. Mm. Mark Chucaro says, my shop is my basement, a narrow space, the width of a one car garage. I feel you, I've had that shop. I struggle with mess because I can't figure out how to manage storage. Do you have recs for movable storage for a small space? Um, that is a really, really tricky thing and it is super, super common. But I also think that you have alighted on part of the solution with your question. Um, I clearly struggle with mess here too, and I struggle with storage. My response to storage is I try to put everything in the biggest labeled boxes that I can, and I stack them so that I can see inside them. So I like the, um, like this kind of plastic, this kind of cheap milk plastic that shatters. It's not very durable, but it's like everything the container store and uh, uh, art bin, everything they make is made out of this stuff. It's terrific for storage. Uh, and I like it because I used to use file boxes, like the, the fold together file boxes. But what I don't like about file boxes is you can put a label on those, but you can't, you can't see what's inside of it until you take the top off. Whereas when I have stacks of those milk plastic bins, I can kind of see what's inside of them and I can see if there's only like one thing left in there or I can see if a part of the costume I want is in there. And that visibility goes a great length to making me feel like I know where stuff is because that's the issue. Okay, right, that's the, <laughs> I always end up writing backwards. The main point of storage is to know where everything is. The way I achieve that is by putting stuff in boxes that I can kind of see through or that I can see all the way through. Uh, and then putting big fat labels on that in masking tape. Now I use white masking tape for my labels because you should not be using duct tape or gaffer tape for your labels. Duct tape or gaffer tape are those cloth based tapes. They will leave a residue on your shit years later and it's no fun to clean it off and it's just awful. Neither of them should be used for labels. Paper tape only for labels. And then stackability, you know, space in your place is at a premium. I'm sure of it. I totally get that. Um, one of the things I like to tell people is there is always more space on the z-axis if you're paying attention. You could maybe get one more shelf up top. 
maybe deep storage up there on top. Maybe you buy a bunch of art bins that are like eight inches tall and you build a shelf that's eight and a quarter inches of space and you line the top of your garage with that and you put the bins on that so you can see where everything is all around you. That's the kind of solution that works for me so that I can tell where stuff is. The other solution is to maybe choose the closet and stack stuff up in there, but then I would keep a running list of what's in those boxes so that you could refer to it later. And when I keep a running list of contents of things, I do it in an Excel spreadsheet so that I can reorder it by box number or alphabetize. And I go back and forth between those two, two things. The alphabetization, yeah, I think I said that right, is so that I can find stuff by the word and the number of the boxes so that I know what is in every box because I'm numbering them as I'm packing them and those don't always cross correlate, nor should you try to make them cross correlate. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects. Questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.